Hey, what's up everyone? It's Berto here. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to walk you through how I change nylon strings on a classical guitar. These are the strings that I like to use, the Flamenco Medium Tensions by Hahnenbach. I have an endorsement to them and I'm very thankful. We're going to start with the first string here and I'm just going to bring it through. And with the first string, since it's thinner than the others, we're going to be able to do three loops. So you see one loop, two loop. Make sure the tail is going towards you. Okay, there's the third. And I'm going to cinch it down. Okay, so now we're going to bring it up and push it through the hole on the first string. All right, we're going to bring it through and we're gonna tie a knot and we're gonna cinch it down. And uh, you see how I'm holding this about, that's about how much string you wanna leave. You wanna only have about two inches of string from your fretboard up to your finger when you stretch it out. So, all right, so tie that knot and now you're gonna wind over, bring it over 180 degrees till you see that. And now you're gonna cinch it down using both hands you're gonna cinch it down over that and keep the string tight while you're doing it. Um, so grab a winder with your other hand and go ahead and start winding clockwise. Right. We're listening to a little bit of Ben Powell here in the background. It's a great finger style guitarist that I ran into by chance in Bath in the UK. All right, so second string where a lot of the magic happens. I like uh, the Hahnenbach strings because they're a little bit thicker than Savarez and a little bit uh, thinner than, say, Labella. So it's a good medium, medium ground. I, I think it's f very similar to Diodario. So only two, two wines on this one, okay? So once you get it there, you're going to bring it up. And we're gonna do the same thing. Bring that hole up to where it's facing the sky. Push your string in. Now grab the tail from the other side and then bring that up through. Great. And so once you have about two inches of string, see, about two, uh, it's about two, three inches. It's fine. Then you're going to tie a knot, grab your winder again, and then you're going to wind clockwise again another 180 degrees or, or a half turn till the, the other end ends up there. And now you're going to cinch it down over the hole. This is the most important part of changing your strings, uh, especially if you have tuners, uh, traditional tuners like this. Majority of my guitars have planetary pegs, which are um, like, uh, like violin pegs, but they have a screw component. Okay. So now we're moving on to the third string. Yeah. I love the, the third string by Hahnenbach. It's just the right amount. It's not too beefy and it's not too thin. Okay. So I'm lifting up the other strings there. Now you'll see that I'm gonna tie that tail from the first and second strings. I'm gonna put it in with this, uh, with this string. So I'm gonna kinda run them all underneath there. Okay, so only two ties on that. Same thing, I'm gonna go up here, get that hole to be facing the ceiling. There it is, great. I've had to do this with students recently over Zoom and it was just not very easy to explain. So I thought I would do a video. Um, you know, your strings should really only take about 30 minutes to get into tune. All right, so cinched it down. Now we're gonna take our winder and once again, we're gonna wind 180 degrees, a half turn until that tail pops up over there. Grab that tail, now cinch it down. 
I used to even use needle nose pliers with the uh, with the the other end just to get it really cinched down. Okay, so once it's in place, you'll notice that my right hand finger is holding the string um, in the nut in its in its slot. Okay, you want to keep the the tension on the strings while you are changing. Okay, moving on to the bass strings. I've literally changed thousands of, of strings, so I, I could probably do this in my sleep. Okay, so this one's gonna be a little bit trickier because we're gonna do a specific type of tie, and the tail of the tie has to reside on the other side of the bridge um, to get it right. Okay, so we bring it around once, right? But see what I'm pointing to? You're gonna now push that down and then cinch it down. So the tail of that piece, and yeah, I'll even push it down right there. But so you see how the tail of that piece is on the other side of the bridge? That is the thing that holds it into place. Okay. Tying it up top now. crazy year this has been huh guys it's actually election night and I'm doing this I'm just trying to get my mind off of everything all right so once I get it in there see you don't want to have too much string before you start winding so I usually like two inches like I said so now I'm gonna tie that down I'm not gonna cinch it too tight because I'm gonna grab my winder once again and wind another 180 degrees another half half turn of the thing there okay now we're gonna cinch that down now if you have an, a pair of needle nose pliers and you want to grab that short end and really pull it down you're welcome to do that as well okay so see how I'm still holding the tension in the right hand now I'm gonna put it in the slot I'm gonna keep the tension on the string while I'm doing that you want to hold the tension on that string because if you don't really do it right, especially tying it down on the bridge, it can uh, it can slip. All right, so fifth string. I don't know. That's how I <laughs> always undo them. I never pull out the tail. Uh, everyone has their ways of doing it. But uh, so yeah, you which side do you use? Do you use the side with yeah? We use the thick side always to go down there on the bridge. All right. So now we're gonna bring it around. Right. Now watch this holding that down and then cinch it down. That is the most important part. And then once you, you get that, then you can push down on that other side. Now hold that string taut while you put it up there on the, on the winder of the fifth string. All right, yeah, so you take that thinned out string usually it has color especially if you're using um, Hanabok or uh, Sabarez usually they have a little bit of color on the end of that so definitely don't want to tie that end of the bridge okay so there's my two inches I'm gonna go ahead and make my knot and then now when the strings have that other part you got to kind of have to pull it past that you don't want to be tying it uh, on the thin part of the string and kind of the thicker or, or the heavier wound part of, of the string so half turn all right cinch it down like I said you can use pliers to even do that but a nice knot that's not gonna go anywhere all right bring it in the slot Keep it nice and tight, wind her up. Okay, so now <clears throat> we're gonna do the sixth and final string. I always leave the sixth string, uh, a, lot, a lot of times I'll leave the sixth string for my old set 
on uh, for about an hour before I change it so I can use it as a reference. Um, so once again, make sure you're using uh, the thick part of the string to tie down here at the bridge. Yeah, those long pinky nails, you can use them for a lot of different things, <laughs> for tools. Okay, so you're going to wind that towards you, okay? Then push it through, and then you're going to take your fingertip and push that part down on the bridge, cinch it down. It takes a little bit of practice. Yeah, and cinch that down there. You should be able to even play a gig 30 minutes after uh, this type of string change. And um, after we do this, finish up this last string, I'm gonna show you a couple tips for aggressively stretching your strings to get them into place. Okay, so we're gonna tie our final knot here. Usually this one, I don't want to give as much string, so one to two inches should be fine. Wind it over till you get that other part. There you go. Cinch it down. Now, like I said, you can use needle nose pliers to really give it a good cinch. There you go. Now, hold it in there into its slot and go ahead and tune it up. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull those. You can either just cut them off with uh, some scissors. I am nervous about doing that because if the string breaks by chance uh, down at the bridge, you can then uh, usually salvage a few inches and uh, not have to use another string. So um, I will usually kind of tie my strings up there. Depends if I'm recording. If I'm recording, I definitely don't want to have those strings all over the place because that could lead to some buzz and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I'll kind of tie them in this little fashion. This is something you'll see on a lot of flamenco guitars. Um, I think other guitarist would leave the string on just for that purpose as well. If your string breaks down by the bridge, you can always use that last couple of inches to pull it through. So I'll usually pull these uh, through the back so that way they're not popping out the front. All right, so I'm gonna fast forward here uh, a second and we're gonna get into how we aggressively stretch the strings to get it into tune okay so we're gonna go ahead and tune up our first string and I'm gonna give it a really good stretch see how I hold it for a, a few seconds as well and then I'll stretch it up it's important And you're just gonna hang out here for a, really a few minutes per string. And this is, I think, the, the step that a lot of people don't do. And they wonder why their guitar doesn't go into tune for a week. So I'm gonna sit here and I'm just gonna pull on that, hold it. second string and really give it a good tug so that's what the second second time I wound it up three times I'll tune it back up so you always want to go from low to high you don't want to tune past the note and then stretch that way you want to uh, yeah, you're, you're asking for problems <laughs> doing it that way. Okay. All right, moving on. Yeah, 
don't be afraid to give it a, a good stretch. I'm stretching those strings out at least at least an inch, maybe an inch and a half. I'm gonna hold it out there too. Yeah, hopefully this sets you guys up for less headache in the future. Having a guitar that's constantly going out of tune is a major pain in the ass. So let's get this done. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna tune up one more time. I'm gonna fast forward through this so we can get to the hacks. And I'm gonna show you how I kind of, well, bang on the guitar. And, uh, force it to get into tune so you can start playing some music. So I like to use these three chords to tune. This B5, which has all perfect intervals. So it's root, fifth, octave. And I'll then go to the A, which is then root, fifth, and octave. I'll stretch them in, and then I'll go to the D. Then I'll add the pinky up on the fifth fret of the first string. I think the ear hears perfect intervals much clearer than having a third. So you'll see here on my first string, I'm tuning by playing the seventh fret harmonic of the fifth string. Okay, so now once we have a tune, we're gonna jump over to these Granaina chords, which are B Phrygian chords, so B and C7. We're gonna push on these and we're gonna stretch them as much as we can with our left hand. for a Cuban landscapes of rain. <laughs> All right, a little classical guitar joke. All right, so I'm just gonna go through and tune my open strings the best I can here. I'm just gonna be checking those perfect intervals at the seventh position and the second position. And i um, still gonna keep stretching. That's still part of it. So I don't know how long we're in, about maybe 20 minutes into the video here but that's about how long it takes. So don't be afraid to get in there and stretch those treble strings. I try not to cut out too much of the video because I wanted you to follow along and you know, be able to play your guitar that's in tune, which is the whole point here. So a bit more tuning on these perfect interval chords in the seventh position, the E, A, and the D, and the D5 here. So I'm back here to B Phrygian. I don't know, it just seems like the most logical chord to kind of bang on when you're tuning your guitar. Gotta love that A flat chord. And we're gonna get back to B Phrygian here. We're gonna bang on it a little bit more and you guys are pretty much ready to go. And finally, I'll wail on it on the seventh fret. Sus E Phrygian chords, E to F, uh, sus. Get ready because check it out. Voila, you got a guitar that's in tune. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with me and changing strings. Make sure to check out my friend Ben Powell on iTunes. Leave me a like and leave me a comment. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe here. Thank you so much.